Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome to Day Trip, and I'm Randall King. And I'm Stephanie Frame, and we are here on location at the Indianapolis Museum of Art. All right, we're making our way up to four wonderful floors of exhibits right here in Indianapolis. As we always say on Day Trip, and Stephanie, this is a quick car trip away from central Indiana, a wonderful place to come for a day this summer. That's right. One of the great things about being in an art museum is there's something for everyone. That's right. There are so many different exhibits here of the paintings you know about, the sculptures, but also gardens and lots of different things for the family and what we also found out it's all free people may not know that that's right and it's a great way to spend a day so let's go let's check it out it sits on 152 acres of landscape gardens and grounds the Indianapolis Museum of Art is among the 10 largest art museums in the US and includes a collection of more than 54,000 works spanning 5,000 years the IMA has holdings of African, American, Asian, European, and contemporary art. From the 100-acre Virginia Fairbanks Art and Nature Park to the interactive education programs and the special events, the Indianapolis Museum of Art offers a whole day of activities for any age. We are here with Candace Gwaltney. She is the Public Relations Manager here at the IMA. Candace, will you tell us a really quick overview of what makes um, IMA so special? Sure, the Indianapolis Museum of Art is one of the 10 oldest and 10 largest art museums in the country. We have 152 acres on our campus, including 100 acres, the Virginia B. Fairbanks Art and Nature Park that we opened last summer. And then, of course, we have the building itself, the art museum, that has three floors of exhibitions and our permanent collections, but one of the things we think is very special is the fact that the IMA is free. So there's no price to enter the museum except for the special exhibition, but otherwise um, we're open dawn to dusk every day on our grounds and then open uh, Tuesday through Sunday. I think there's probably a lot of Hoosiers who know about the IMA and just keep planning to make a visit. They don't really realize, though, I guess, what a hidden treasure this is sometimes. Oh, exactly. You can spend a whole day here. There's so much to see. We always have um, a wide range of exhibitions from, right now we have Hard Truths, The Art of Thornton Dial. We have a really great uh, exhibition called Material World, looking at um, textiles and fashion arts from around the world. And then just our permanent collection, um, such as in the European galleries, you'll see a lot of names you recognize from the Van Gogh, um, to, you know, Gauguin to the yeah, to the Gauguin, yeah. all of those. So. Candace Gwaltney, director of PR for the IMA, and we want to see what this is all about for ourselves. The amazing collection of art at the IMA is impressive. The multiple collections are organized by origin and time period. Even if you're not an art enthusiast, you'll recognize the names Seurat, Gauguin, O'Keeffe. Rembrandt, Monet, Renoir, and Pissarro hanging on the walls. And in addition to the permanent collections, the IMA features many traveling and rotating exhibitions. We caught up with Rebecca Long to talk about their special Gauguin as Printmaker exhibit. This exhibition, um, Gauguin as Printmaker, features a, a newly acquired set of prints, 11 prints, created by Paul Gauguin in 1889. Um, and they were, folk, they were the focus of an exhibition um, in a cafe owned by a man named Volpini, which is why we call it the Volpini Suite, um, that took place at the same time as the World's Fair in Paris. So Gauguin created this set of prints um, to be shown at the cafe, and they were available for sale for anyone who was interested. This set of prints, as I said, 11 pieces, um, are Gauguin's first attempt and first experimentation with printmaking, um, which is a medium that he took up with great enthusiasm uh, later in his career. And in it, we can see him beginning to explore themes that he would pick up um, as, he, as he focused on um, the, the peasants and landscape of Brittany, for instance. Um, we see him exploring images um, that he had um, seen in Martinique, where he had visited previously, and that he would take up again when he eventually went to Tahiti in his famous series of paintings and prints. It's important that you come and see these prints because we can only show them for a brief period of time because of the yellow paper, they fade very easily. Um, they're a recent acquisition at the IMA, a complete set of the Volpini suite, which are very, very rare, including um, the cover that they were originally contained in, and they round out the museum's really important collection of art from the School of Ponavan. Second only to the collections is the IMA's special programs. Throughout the year, the IMA offers a wide variety of special events and activities for the whole family. 
Well, we're out in what you might call the backyard of the IMA with Ann Laker, who's director of programs here. And this is a little drizzly today, but later this summer, this is going to be a real hub of activity because you have your summer movie series out here. Tell us Correct. a little bit about that. Well, everyone is invited to come out and experience summer nights. It's a, a series of 13 programs every uh, Friday night in the summertime. The movies start at dusk, and we love to uh, have movies from all different times in history. So we've got everything from Elvis in the 50s and 60s to uh, uh, Poltergeist in the 80s. <laughs> you can't lose with that. Well, so this whole area will be filled up with lawn chairs and people just enjoying the summer movie series. Right. It's a wonderful opportunity to bring a picnic and bring your bring a crowd, stake a claim here on the lawn and, and enjoy a film when the sun goes down. Well, tell us about some of the other things this summer that'll be coming up that families can take advantage of. Well, the IMA is a wonderful destination for families. Last summer, we opened a park called 100 Acres, the Virginia Bee Fairbanks Art and Nature Park. Kids love climbing on some of the sculptures out there. There's a huge lake, there are woods, there's a beautiful pavilion. We'll have a whole day of activities, including a, a huge game of freeze tag, if you can imagine uh, 200 people playing freeze tag. We'll also have a yoga session at dawn and uh, drumming and uh, art making for kids. So it's just all kinds of things that are just associated with the museum. It's not just looking at paintings, is it? Correct. It's also that, and I think you'll be exploring that as well. But this is a place where you can have a variety of experiences and definitely spend a whole day. So lots to look forward to this summer. Ann Laker, director of programs. It's all here at the Indianapolis Museum of Art. For the young and young at heart, the IMA offers hands-on interactive experiences. The Star Studio is an art-making exhibit where guests have the opportunity to make something of their own, inspired by the art and ideas on display at the IMA. The projects are designed to be accessible and fun for all ages, so I decided to grab a piece of paper and try it out myself. The Star Studio is the perfect way to end your day, and I got to express through art how the exhibits and collections affected me. Stephanie, with so many floors of things to see and do, and it's all free, why wouldn't someone want to make a trip down here? That's right, there have been all sorts of families and school groups, just all sorts of different people um, exploring. There's so much to offer here at the Indianapolis Museum of Art. It's a hidden treasure for some of you, so do take the day and come down here just a really short drive away, and you can spend a whole day here enjoying yourself. That's right, and that is it for this episode of Day Trippin'. In a moment, back with more Crossroads. <laughs>